Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about the African diaspora in Greece. Freedom A black presence has been recorded in the ancient Greek Empire from as early as the Minoans, a civilization in Bronze Age Crete 3,000 years before Christ. The Minoans established trade routes with Egypt, and there are paintings of sub Saharan Africans and Aegean people inside the tomb of Rechmir, dating to the 14th century BC. The ancient Greeks referred to all black Africans as Ethiopians. This was a combination of two Greek words epho, meaning burn, and ops, meaning face. So, yes, the etymology of the word Ethiopia literally means burnt face referring to the darker complexion of pigmented African skin. The 5th century BC Greek historian Herodotus wrote that Africans were primarily depicted in archaic and classical Greek art as having black skin and woolly hair. Records show that when Persia invaded Greece in 480 BC, there were black troops among King Xerxes' army, the king who led the failed invasion. At the time though, most ancient Greeks still had the notion of Ethiopia, the equivalent of sub-Saharan Africa, as an almost mythical land located to the south of Egypt. Ethiopians featured in the plays of a number of Greek writers, including Aeschylus, Sophocles and Euripides, and were regularly depicted in Greek art and vase painting. In Greek mythology, there is a man named Memnon who was an Ethiopian king, considered to be almost as skilled as the great Greek warrior Achilles. He is depicted as being a noble man, beloved by the gods, and an excellent fighter. During the Trojan War, Memnon brings his army to help defend Troy, and is ultimately killed by Achilles. Following the death of Alexander the Great in 323 BC and the start of the Ptolemaic dynasty rule in Egypt, significant Greek and African populations coexisted along the Nile. There are works of art from the Hellenistic period that depicted Africans as athletes, entertainers and slaves. Fast forward to the Byzantine period in Greece and there are much more limited historical records of black people. During the Byzantine period, Greek interaction with African people was mainly limited to trade and some missionary work. The Byzantine calendar included celebrations of the Egyptian robber turned monk, Moses the Black. From the mid-15th century until 1821, Greece was part of the Ottoman Empire, a dynasty of Turkish origin which spanned across Southeast Europe, Western Asia and North Africa. This lasted until the Greek War of Independence in 1821, which was followed by the proclamation of the First Hellenic Republic in 1822. The Ottoman Empire traded in enslaved Africans for hundreds of years, which contributed to the significant Afro-Turkish population which still resides in Turkey today. To find out more, check out my video on the African diaspora in Turkey. Greece and Turkey organised a forced population exchange in 1923, whereby the Orthodox Christian citizens of Turkey were expatriated to Greece in exchange for the Muslim Greek population, many of whom were black and who were forcibly deported to Turkey. One special remnant, however, of Ottoman rule in Greece is the significant Afro-Greek presence in the town of Avato in the northeast of Greece, 25 kilometers away from the city of Xanthi. The black inhabitants of the town of Avato are thought to be descended from Sudanese slaves who were brought to Greece during Ottoman rule. For generations, the Afro-Greeks in Avato and nearby villages mainly married amongst themselves, though in recent generations they have mixed with the wider white population. As a result, the town is becoming increasingly mixed and the black population is dwindling, though some black elders do remain. On the whole, however, the African diaspora in Greece today stems from more recent waves of migration. A survey conducted in 2011 identified two main influxes of African migrants. The first wave was comprised of African migrants who came to Greece from the 1990s onwards on study programs or for work purposes, mainly from Nigeria, Ghana, Ethiopia and the Congo. Many of them have since had children who were born and raised in Greece. The second wave was comprised of migrants from Senegal, Somalia and Guinea who arrived in Greece from 2008 onwards in search of a better life than they had in their countries of origin. Already contending with an economic recession and high levels of unemployment, Greece has proven a complicated destination for undocumented African asylum seekers and Greece's struggle with the colloquially named migrant crisis has been well documented. 
For many migrants passing through the Mediterranean on their way to other European destinations, their journey is cut short in Greece, where they remain undocumented. They either integrate into the wider population, or they remain in migrant camps, such as those on the Greek islands of Lesbos, Chios and Samos. In recent years, there's been an increase in openly racist and xenophobic sentiment in Greece, ranging from verbal attacks to several migrants being murdered by members of neo-Nazi gangs. These gangs are affiliated with the far-right fascist political party Golden Dawn. A turning point came in 2013 when Greek anti-fascist rapper Pavlos Fisas, aka Killer P, was murdered by a supporter of the party. In response to the killing, thousands of people took to the streets in a series of nationwide anti-fascist protests and 69 members of the Golden Dawn Party were charged with running a criminal organisation. To this day, there is a strong Antifa movement in Greece and the traditionally anti-authoritarian Exachia neighbourhood of Athens is home to hundreds of migrants, many of whom live in squats. Golden Dawn has slowly declined in popularity and in 2019 lost all its remaining seats in the Greek legislative election. Party founder and leader Nikolaos Michaloliakos vowed that Golden Dawn was not over and would be back again. In spite of the racial tensions, there are events and organisations celebrating the black African presence in Greece, particularly in the capital city of Athens. The city is home to an annual event called the African Cultural Festival, which celebrates the African diaspora in Athens. It also serves as an opportunity to share African cultures with the people of Greece and alleviate some of the tensions and negative stereotypes stemming from the migrant crisis. Athens also hosts a beauty pageant called Miss Africa Greece, where women of African descent living in Greece can participate. The competition was the subject of a 2015 Vice documentary called Miss Africa Greece Beauty Pageant, which is well worth a watch if you haven't seen it. Famous Afro-Greeks include the NBA player Giannis Antetokounmpo, journalist Elizabeth Elechi, model and philanthropist Noella Kusaris Musunka, and the Greek Sudanese singer Marina Sati. That's it for this episode on the African diaspora in Greece. Be sure to check out other episodes in my series about the African diaspora worldwide and find me on Instagram at Freedom Is Mine Official. I'll see you in the next video. Freedom is mine.